and welcome. My name is Joy Hampton Henry, and I am the director for the Mid Florida Regional Office of the ACLU. We are extremely pleased to bring to you tonight a forum about First Amendment rights um, in a recognition of the RNC. We are doing this in partnership with the um, Stetson University School of Law, um, American Constitutional Society chapter. And um, thanks to them, we are able to have this wonderful space in which to host this program. As you already know, during the week of August 27th, Campbell will host the Republican National Convention. Thousands, thousands of individuals will converge on our great city, and millions will be watching while leaders from across the country debate and discuss political and socioeconomic issues impacting our nation. Outside the convention, there will be mass demonstrations and spontaneous disorder, incidents as thousands of individuals exercise their First Amendment right to speech, free speech, and right to protest. The normal rule of law will be challenged. The city will face the challenge of how to balance one's civil liberties with public safety. We have a great panel of individuals with us tonight who will inform and discuss critical issues facing law enforcement. The use of force, manage, managing mass demonstrations, and police response. As you know, the ACLU of Florida protects and defends the U.S. Constitution and Bill of Rights. So we wanted to make sure that you understand your rights and that law enforcement is better equipped to protect the public while protecting citizens' rights. So without any further ado, I would like to turn over the program to attorney John Dean Felder, who is attorney um, in the Mid-Florida office for the ACLU, and John will take over with the program. Thank you again for being here with us this evening, and um, I hope you will enjoy the program and walk away feeling very informed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joyce. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Back corner? Yes. Back corner? Yes. All right. Um, before uh, we get started on this, and I'm so happy you all came out. Um, very enthusiastic crowd. But I wanted to start um, with a little somber note. Um, I wanted to have a moment of silence for, for our local First Amendment uh, hero, uh, Bill Sharp. We lost him yesterday. He was a great guy. And uh, if we could have just a, a moment of silence and respect for Bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know he'd appreciate it. The, um, before we get going on, on this, um, I just wanted to recognize uh, a few of our uh, dignitaries who are here this evening. Uh, I'll, I'll get to Julie Holt, our public defender, in a second. But uh, before I do, I saw come in the room uh, city council members Mary Mulhern. Raise, raise your hand, Mary. Stand up. There we go. <laughs> city councilman Harry Cohen. City Councilwoman Lisa Montalion. And uh, the Mayor's Chief of Staff, Santiago Corrado, is here. Did I miss anybody? I know Jack Espinosa is a dignitary, but uh, anyway. All right. Um, so anyway, I, I wanted to thank our hosts uh, and our co-hosts. Uh, Joyce already did that. Let me start. Uh, by telling you what, what, how we're going to proceed in the evening, and, uh, and then we'll get to our, our distinguished panel. Um, what, what I'm planning on doing for, for about maybe 50 minutes or so uh, are going to be some prepared questions uh, that, that I've been uh, working on a little bit uh, uh, associated with the RNC and First Amendment issues uh, that, that uh, are relevant to it. Um, when, after we pass through that, I want to get to questions from you, from the audience, which probably be a lot more interesting than the ones I read. But, um, uh, and the way we're going to do that tonight, um, 
and, and we're not trying to censor anybody, but we're just trying to avoid duplication and everything else, is, uh, is we gave out uh, three by five cards when you came in. If you don't have the three by five cards, we ran out, so just find a piece of scratch paper. Write your questions on them um, anytime you know, during the evening. Send, send your questions, pass them over to the far edges of the room, that side and that side, and we'll have people coming along the perimeter of the room, picking up their questions. Then they're going to take them over to our esteemed panel over there, wave your hands, guys, uh, at the desk over there. They're going to sort through your questions, try and avoid the redundancy, and, and uh, see how we do. So those, that's what we'll be answering those questions toward the end of the evening. And um, with that, I'd like to uh, go ahead and introduce our speakers one at a time. And, uh, and, and I'd like them uh, each to just say a few words, and then I'll move on to the next one. Our, our first speaker uh, to my immediate right is uh, my good friend Julie, Julianne Holt. Uh, Julian Holt is the public defender for the 13th Judicial Circuit of Florida, Hillsborough County. She d uh, directs the representation of about 75,000 cases annually and with over 223 employees, including 100, more than 110 attorneys. She's an advocate for, for the indigent who are accused, and uh, she's worked on numerous issues related to criminal justice system. Julie just told me the other day she spends, spends a lot of time in Tallahassee these days to make sure that the appropriate funding is there for her office to make sure they can continue to do their good work. Um, she also serves as an adjunct uh, college professor. Julie? Thank you. Well, first of all, good evening and thank you very much. I'm honored to be a part of this particular... That's not working either. How's that? Hello? Okay, how? Better. Better? Yeah. Well, good evening and, and thank you very much. I'm very honored to be a part of this particular panel and to address uh, some very important issues, obviously. I have lived here my entire life. I am excited to be a part of what is going to happen here in August. I will uh, tell you, I am a person that sees the, the glass half full. I believe that this community is going to come together and I believe that this community is going to look tremendous on TV, I think we are going to do everything that we can possibly do to make everyone feel welcome here, allow everyone to espouse their opinions, allow anyone to be a part of everything that is occurring during those seven to ten days that they plan on being here. And at the end of it all, I think that we will be one city that can be held out as a model city of how to take on a very difficult issue. I look forward to working together with all the partners, all the partners, that are going to have to work tirelessly during that seven to 10 day time period to make this a very good function and something that the city of Tampa and the, the county of Hillsborough can be proud of. Thank you for inviting me and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Our next uh, member of the panel is, uh, is Jim Schimber, Jr. Um, I've known Jim many years. He uh, practiced law as a part, he was a partner for uh, I think about 25 years at Holland and Knight, um, extensively working in land use, zoning, planning, development, and, and government permitting. He's an AB rated attorney listed in the Best Lawyers in America Guide. Uh, with all those titles, uh, Mayor Buckhorn was smart enough to bring Jim Schimberg on as city attorney last year when he got elected. Jim. Well, thank you, John. Um, first of all, they promised me it was only 27 through the 30th, not seven to 10 days. So, <laughs> sign up for this. But, but you know, on, on behalf of, of the city, I agree with, with what Ms. Holt said. Is, I mean, we really want this to hopefully be a positive thing for Tampa, positively showcase the city. We understand there's going to be some challenges, and we've been working very hard to try to prepare for those and make sure that we can, you know, we can handle those effectively. I'd like to recognize my colleagues from the city attorney's office who been working very hard on this issue for many, many months now, and many of them are here today. Um, and we, we just look forward to, to working with, you know, with everybody in order to try to make sure that we're prepared and we can have a safe and productive event that you know, we hope there's zero arrest. We hope that it, it turns out to be a very positive um, showcase for Tampa. Thank you, Jim. Okay, next down the line is uh, Professor uh, Louis uh, Varelli. Uh, pronounced right? Okay, Professor Varelli is a Stetson University uh, professor of constitutional law. 
I've heard nothing but good things about him from many of his students uh, and, and fellow faculty members. He previously was a trial attorney for the Department of Justice, a clerk for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania and the Third Circuit Court of Appeal. He graduated from University of Pennsylvania Law School, not too shabby professor, and uh, his articles have appeared in many journals. Um, Lou is a member of the American Association of Law School Section on Constitutional Law. Welcome, Lou. Thank you all for having me. It really is a uh, company I don't belong in up here, but I'm grateful for the opportunity. Uh, I was living in Philadelphia during the 2000 Republican National Convention, so sometimes I think they're following me. <laughs> <laughs> I have the, the privileged position of being able to sort of think about these things at a, in a, from a different way. And I think an opportunity like this, a truly political event in a public space the size of the city of Tampa, is really an interesting constitutional moment in many ways. Um, the Supreme Court has vigorously defended, I think courts of all stripes have vigorously defended the First Amendment, and we equally think of, American, of an American value as something, um, the protection of order and civility and in that dialogue. And I'm anxious to see how Tampa sort of marries those two. I'm confident that it will. Um, I think we're going to have lots of passionate people saying passionate things in an orderly, respectable way, at least I'm hopeful for that. And I think talking about how the law works, both to respect the values of free speech and of order and civility is something that I hope we'll get a chance to talk about tonight. I'm looking forward to see it play out um, on the stage in Tampa in a couple of months. Thank you. Thank you. Our next panelist is Ellen Angelotti. Ellen comes to us from the Pointer Institute where she's on the faculty. She is a, uh, a journalist um, and most recently she's been exploring legal challenges related to new technologies, including the use of online chats and podcasts and bloggers and that sort of thing. She's judged many national multimedia uh, journalism uh, contests. She's directed a, a original and award-winning multimedia content for various sources. And she's currently attending Stetson Law School. Welcome, Ellen. Well, thanks for having me. Um, as the only non-lawyer here, I'll stick to the practical issues and more of like those issues concerning journalists and um, speech. And I really think that with this convention cycle, what we're going to see is the influence of social media. And um, you know, I think that statutes like this are going to be very important to us in Tampa especially. And I think that something we've really learned with the advent of social media is the conversation and speech that can go on online and the strength and the power of that. So um, we've seen this internationally with the uprisings overseas where when speech is suppressed, it's like a balloon. Information still has to get out some way. And so I think that the more that we can support free speech and give people the opportunity to express the opinions they have, whether they're a journalist or just an ordinary person, I think that that's going to be important in creating a civil discourse. And I also think what's going to be really um, important during this election cycle and during this convention season is that question as to who is a journalist and does it really matter as far as protection. So if I'm a blogger and I have 100,000 people reading my blog, am I going to be able to get a press pass? And how can we prepare for uh, for those who are going to be covering the convention that aren't working with the Tribune or the Times. And um, I think that, that those are a couple of the big issues that we started to see in 2008 and are really going to come to the surface during this election cycle. So I think having conversations like this, you know, the city working with journalists and the public to really understand, you know, where they, you know, where and, and when um, they can assemble and how they can assemble to encourage Public, safe, public safety and to encourage everyone to get their viewpoints out there. I think uh, the more education, the more conversations like this we can have prior to the convention, the more uh, productive and positive of an experience it's going to be for everybody and the better it's going to make Tampa look during the convention. Thank you. And last but, last but not least, brought all the way in from Buffalo, New York, is uh, Mickey Osterreicher. How did I do on that one? All right. Uh, Mickey uh, uh, comes to us from the National Press Photographers Association, where he serves as general counsel. Uh, when, he's, when he's not doing that, he's also a professor and advisor. He drafts legislation. But he's the public face for the NPPA, which is a very strong organization, been around for a number of years. 
Um, before he did that, he was well trained because he was an award-winning photojournalist. His work appeared in, in many different uh, forms of print and television. Um, he also serves as a reserve sheriff's deputy, so he understands that side of the equation as well. Mickey, we're really pleased you were able to fly uh, to join us. Uh, Mickey Osterreicher. Well, hopefully you can hear me. Um, thank you all for coming. I, I think the turnout was great. Uh, I deal with these issues almost on a daily basis around the country. Uh, <clears throat> photographers are being interfered with and arrested uh, at an almost epidemic proportion. It's really unfortunate. I think that <clears throat> the, uh, there's always been tension between the police and the press. And, and lately, with the Occupy movement, I think that that's exacerbated the problem, along with kind of this perfect storm of everybody's got a cell phone, and every cell phone has a camera, and everybody's taking pictures. Uh, from my perspective, when I talk about this, it kind of started with 9-11, uh, and, and somehow, I don't know how, I haven't been able to put my finger on it, but the war on terrorism is somehow morphed into the assault on photography. And, and I really don't want to just look at this, uh, you know, from from one perspective only. But uh, not only is it important for the press to have um, that right of a free press, but uh, it's the court, uh, one court in particular in the First Circuit Court of Appeals, um, talked about the rights of the public and the press being coextensive. And I think that that's really important. The problem is. Uh, when you talk about who is a journalist, uh, I, I participated in the uh, in a, a coalition in trying to get a federal shield law, and that was our biggest stumbling block, was trying to define who is a journalist. The problem is that everybody's a journalist, entitled to a qualified privilege, and the first challenge, they're going to strike it down, and nobody will be a journalist. So I know we're trying to be inclusive, and the fact that uh, you know, news today is just as likely to come from a blogger or somebody with a cell phone as it is from somebody with a credential or working for a network. But still, um, you know, the issue for, for law enforcement when they're out there is trying to, in the heat of the moment, figure out who is who and what's what. And that, that's no, no easy task. So from my perspective, there is no substitute for preparation. And the fact that so many of you have turned out to talk about this and to participate in this, I hope it bodes well for the city of Tampa. Thank you. And, and Mickey, uh, Julie mentioned uh, that one of the keys to all this is, is all the agencies and other folks working together to make this a good event. I'm really pleased that uh, Mickey uh, contacted me. We got we got him in touch with Tampa Police Department. They're going to have a little dialogue tomorrow, and they're talking to actually to Mickey about actually using him to possibly train TPD as to the rights of, of the press. You know that's the kind of cooperation, and you know that we should definitely uh, encourage. I think it's a real positive step. Okay, um, so let's get down to, to some of the the meatier issues. Um, 